What is your real life love story? My SO of nine years just left me. I need some good love stories. Oh, I got a nice one for this. Or a sad one. I'm from Germany, and in summer 2013, I was in England for two weeks. It was kind of a language course, and there were about 60 other students in my age. Two weeks passed, and I had a lot of fun meeting people, living in a host family, and doing stuff with my friend who'd come with me. On our last evening, when there was almost no time to meet the others, because early in the morning we had to return, a whole group ate pizza at a restaurant. I sat there with my friend, and all of a sudden, the girl I hadn't seen before sat down on the other side of the table. We had one of the most magical, enthusiastic conversations ever. It was amazing. I've never before so felt such a deep and strong connection to anyone. We were definitely meant for each other. Unfortunately, we were separated because when we had to go back to Germany, I got to know she lives in the South and I rather in the North. I'm so glad I asked her for her number. Usually I'm not the guy to make such an optimistic move when getting someone to know. We chatted since then every day on WhatsApp and it's still amazing. Because she felt the same way I did at that restaurant, our conversation was absolutely fantastic and we soon fell in love with each other. There were like 500 kilometers between us and we didn't have the chance to meet each other yet. But we will. And as soon as I can finally hug and feel her, this story will be complete. That's a really good story. Thank you for sharing. Dude, hold tight. Don't let her get away. If there's something in life that makes you this happy, just remember how much you feel that is worth fighting for. <laughs> in the first few weeks of my current relationship, I wrote boyfriend a letter from Mars. I was bored in class and constructed this alternate life where we were living as a long-distance relationship while I researched on Mars and a colony of scientists. I threw up some touches while I thought would amuse him. Like, how was Better Call Season 6? The finale was such a cliffhanger, and he was delighted. Anyway... Two weeks later, he presented me with a copy of The Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury. It said it was a return letter, and the whole book was annotated with his thoughts and expressions of affection for me and for Bradbury. <laughs> I hadn't told him just how important Bradbury was to me, and mentioned him in passing, but not expressed that he was my favorite author, and never brought up my love of personally marked books. He's a keeper. We meet at a gender bending party, I think. Damn, that dude looks good in a dress, so I go over and over to him. Turns out he's a really cool geeky person like me. Fast forward a couple weeks. We've been talking every day, and we get along really well. We go to Quiznos for our first date, and he's wearing socks and mandals. I take this as a sign that he's a comfortable, casual person, and I like him a lot for it. Our second date's at my place. We stay up by talking long enough for my roomie to go to a party, come back, get high, and eat two bags of oatmeal cookies. At 3 a.m. he leaves though kissing me. I get a text later that says, sorry I didn't kiss you. I'm always really nervous the first time. This is coming from a 23 year old man. I just said he's the most adorable man I've ever met. Our third day to his place, and we watch The Thing. We kiss for the first time, and I find out he's a damn good kisser too. Fast forward a month or two. I stay over his apartment for the first time. My friend attempted suicide that morning. I've been having an awful time. We snuggle all night. Fast forward another few months. We've been staying over at one another's places for a while, but no sex. We're not abstaining for any reason. We just haven't felt like it, I guess. One morning I wake up and see his face caught in the sunlight, slanting through the curtains and think that's the most beautiful person I've ever met. Followed promptly by oh shit because I realized that I have feelings for him. Even though we're not, even though we're supposed to be just casually dating, I proceed to squash down those feelings. Fast forward another few weeks, we split up over the winter holiday because it'll be long distance and supposedly neither of us is invested in the relationship. Fast forward another two months, I go over to his apartment to play games and hang out. A couple hours later. We go into his bedroom and sit down on the bed. I tell him that I want to start dating again. He gets all flustered and says he doesn't know if that's a good idea. I convince him there's no harm because I think he's awesome and I liked when we were dating casually. 
He finally agrees. Fast forward to the next morning. I find out why he thought it wasn't a good idea. <laughs> he wakes up, looks me right in the eyes, and says, in the cutest, happiest voice ever, Manitary 5500, I love you, and I don't want to just be casual anymore. I love him, too. We've been together for over two years now, and I couldn't be happier. <laughs> I started talking to this guy on Facebook. He was blunt, opinionated, and from what I could tell, a genius. He intrigued out of me on an intellectual level when we started talking, mostly joking and insulting each other. Eventually, I got comfortable with him, and I vent to him. Even though I was sure it only bothered him. It didn't. One particularly bad day, I wasn't really in the mood to talk to anyone. And I made it known. He told me that he didn't count when I didn't want to talk to anyone. And he ended up giving me his phone number so I could text him about it. I did. I stayed up all night texting him. He kind of became the only person I went to talk to about things. At that point, we weren't interested in each other romantically. He was pursuing a different girl kind of quietly, but I ended up catching on after a couple months. Now I have to take a second to say, we were totally opposite people. He smoked, drank, partied, and generally didn't give a single. And I went to church every Sunday, got straight A's, and had never gotten drunk. It sort of bothered me that he was into those things. But I'm also not the type of person that will tell you how to live. And like I said, he intrigued the out of me. One night he called me. I thought it was an accident because it was late at night. And well, he'd never called me before. I answered hesitantly, and sure enough, he called on purpose. We talked for about five hours that night. He was so interesting to me, and from then on, we talked on the phone quite a bit, often for hours at a time. Anyway, the girl I'd been pursuing ended up changing her mind, broke his heart, and I remember him telling me that I was the only girl he didn't hate now. At the same time, I didn't know what he meant. By this time, I cared about him more than he knew. This is where it gets scary. I almost lost him before anything began. He almost ran away. He stole a truck and made it to the border of our state and then decided to turn back. He later told me he came back because of me. He didn't tell me this even happened until a while after it did. I remember a little while after he told me he went camping in a part of our state that's essentially wilderness. There was no cell service and he didn't answer me for four days. By the fourth day, I thought he left. Scared the shit out of me. We weren't even dating at that point. Fast forward a little and we start actually hanging out. It was kind of an unsaid date the first time we hung out. He walked all the way across town to meet me and we hung out at a park. He commented how small my hands were just so he could compare hand sizes and almost hold my hands. I think he thought I was oblivious. I wasn't. We continued hanging out and every time he would walk all the way across town. Say sweet things to me and we both knew where it was going. One day, we are sitting on a hill overlooking a field at just about dusk and he put his arm around me. <laughs> it was the time of the year when you're not quite used to the colder fall air. He was warm and I was shivering, half because of excitement and other half cold. I remember it like it was yesterday. Then he officially asked me out. It was all so perfect. He called me every night before I fell asleep to say goodnight. Actually, he still does, only now sometimes I'm asleep first. We'd write each other letters, and he made me music. We'd lay in a blanket outside and look at stars, and we even danced under the moon. He'd sing Frank Sinatra to me, we'd go on walks. One time we met at the beach and start pouring rain. I wanted to wait it out under a gazebo, but he insisted we just walk back to his house. So we did. It was summer and the rain was warm enough to comfortably get soaked. We ran the couple blocks back, kicked water at each other, and laughing. I only wish I would have kissed him to make it more cliche. Nonetheless, that day was wonderful. We've been together a little over a year now, and I feel like my life is a romance novel. We, of course, have our fights, but every not everything is perfect. But I'm incredibly grateful for the memories I've shared with this man. He means the world to me. TLDR got carried away. Literally and figuratively. Edit, spelling in a few more details. Also, I'm on mobile and this post doesn't really do it justice. 
My fiancé and I met in Jamaica while I was on a trip with some friends and she was with her family. We had a romantic evening on the beach and didn't see each other again. Until she found me on Facebook afterwards. We kept in touch and developed a long-distance relationship. Eventually, she transferred to my university and we've been together ever since. I went to Six Flags with a friend as a date kind of thing. We pull up at the same time as these dudes driving the yellow version of my car. I laugh because it's a total chick car. We park and the driver gets out. This big, burly, beard, manly man steps out and I'm blown away. I keep walking with my friend and I saw ran into manly man about six times during the time we're at the park. As the hammond starts to get tired bored with the park so as we're leaving I grab a napkin and leave a note in their car. It said, you in the band's T, your cute is with my number attached. 3 a.m. I get a text saying, all of us are wearing band tees. Oh, um, you had a Captain America tattoo on your leg? Oh, hey, yeah, that's me. Hi. 2.5 years later, I'm sitting here at our house with our one month old son as he's at the brewery up the street with his buddies. I'm sorry, my SO and I have been together nearly seven years. We met in high school, but it wasn't until after he graduated, he's a year older, that I put together that he was interested in me. In class, he'd draw me silly cartoons of pirates, made me gifts, and we'd share cosmic brownies. He ate the icing while well, I ate the brownie and the little sprinkles on top. We hung out outside of school a few times with friends where he showed me that he learned how to play my favorite Christmas song on the guitar and he borrowed a friend's Nintendo Wii because he knew I wanted to play it when it first came out. What did I do? I tried to find a date for I tried to find him a date for prom, talked him into going with this crazy exchange student and I was completely ignorant of his feelings for me while I was dating a guy that was manipulative, mean and controlling. After about a year of him trying to show me that he had feelings for me, it finally hit me. He gave me the strength to break up my mean boyfriend, and I showed up at my current SO's house on Valentine's Day with an origami rose. Well, uh, this is a sad ending, but I like it. Here goes, freshman year of high school. I was kind of a hopeless loner. Didn't have any friends since I'd switched school districts. Ended up spending most days in total silence. One day I finally talked to that cute girl named Natalie in art class. And she smiled and actually talked back. No one ever talked to me when I talked to them. So this was a pleasant surprise. And we had a nice conversation during class change. Next couple days, we break the ice some more and become semi-good friends. One day, I get a random text message. It's from her. She'd found my page on Facebook just to get my number. I'm normally stupid about this kind of thing. But I got the hint this time. It was obvious that she was at least a little interested. We ended up becoming amazing friends through text messages. She became my sole confidant, and I hers. Well, three weeks after I first talked to her, I asked her out. It was New Year's Eve, and I'd already worked the entire date out with her parents, how she'd get there and all. She said yes. An hour later, my brother drives me to her house, and her parents drive us to a nearby theme park. We were both freshmen. Not old enough to drive. And let us stay there till the next morning since the park was open and monitored the whole night due to it being New Year's Eve. We rode some rides for a few hours and then ate at one of the fancy, it was disgusting and overpriced restaurants in the park. Then we got in the ridiculously long line for the Ferris wheel. But we were lucky, we managed to get on at the perfect time to be at the very top of the minute the ball dropped. It was possibly the most cliched moment ever, our first kiss. Top of the first wheel, New Year's Eve, fireworks going off in the backgrounds. It was magical. Fast forward a year and we're still dating. I'm convinced I'm going to marry this girl. Her brother, a complete and total stoner, is supposed to drive her home. She has no clue he's high. He runs late and gets T-boned by a semi. She dies instantly. He gets a few scratches. And that's my love story. Sorry if that didn't cheer you up like it was supposed to. She decided I was hers the first time we met. My opinion didn't enter into it. 
She knew my vices, my makeup, my biology called to her. We cinched up quickly and found we could cover for each other and we went all still and rotten inside. We fed off each other for most of a decade. At the end, we decided to die together. I awoke in the seedy motel room with her cold beside me. Sometimes I fool myself into believing this existence is some kind of afterlife. That I was the one who died and now she goes on without me. With new friends, new lovers. She was like my life that's difficult to explain. A supernova of energy and will that erupted out and washed over everything I was. Everything I ever will be. I sometimes wish I never woke up that day. It was very beautiful and I'm sorry for your loss. I was in the subway. I leave the train, look to my left, and this is what I saw. Brown eyes, brown hair, white skin, shy red lips, black jacket, with a boy. Once her eyes met, she forgot about him, and I could only focus on her. I saw so much of her in those two split seconds. The desire in her eyes was infinite, the desire in mine the same. As I saw her the second time, I knew she wanted to be with me, and I knew I wanted to be with her. Now I know she wants me. Now I know she'll find me and we'll meet again. The door is closed and I've yet to meet her. You'll find her. Just keep looking. 